Oh man, what a beautiful set that was. I am so grateful uh, for this times that we have to worship and I'm so grateful for uh, us just having the capability to be able to do this. The teams that we have. Oh man, this They're creative awesome. team yep. that's doing all this stuff for us as we are doing this online. Uh, it's just been amazing. And so really in this season is what we're kind of talking about today. Right. Um, and what this has looked like, not only um, for you and I, but hopefully we're going to be able to do this and see what it looks like for you as well. Right. Uh, and because something that's been happening really from the beginning, like during this quarantine season, this COVID season, I have been very intentional into tuning into what God is, is speaking and right. what he's speaking to me. And uh, and I want to move with him, right, in whatever he is doing. But not only for me, uh, for my family, for my wife, uh, my daughters, and then not only for my immediate family, but for the larger family, the church family as well. And looking at that, I'm sure you guys have heard, like, our lead pastor, as he's told us many times, we here at New Life Church are going to be sensitive to the Spirit's leading. Right. And so right from the beginning, of this, right, right, right out of the gate, just um, in early March, it was God kind of placed on my heart Psalm 112, Psalm 112, yeah. specifically verses five through eight. I didn't put that in an outline or anything, so you guys can uh, write that down, type it into the comments. Um, but in that, basically, what he was saying is that the righteous. The righteous will have to fear right. troubling times because of their faith and because of their dependence upon God. And then in verse 8, I love it because it says they are secure. <laughs> They're absolutely secure uh, without fear. And it says this, and in the end, they will look and triumph over their foes. Right. Because, I mean, it's, it's what he does, right? He, yeah. he comforts us and he reminds us of who we are in him and who he is, right? And, yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And so then as we keep moving like uh, four to five weeks in into this COVID season, there was a shift really in the message that he was speaking uh, to me and personally. And it was kind of uh, changing from kind of this season of rest into more of a plan of action. It shifted to an action during isolation. And he placed on my heart Hebrews chapter 12, uh, verses 26 and 27. And I want to kind of unfold that. But first, will you uh, just share that with us? Yeah, it says this. It says, at that time, his voice shook the earth. But now he has promised, once more, I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. The words once more, verse 27 says this, indicate the removing mm. of what can be shaken. That is the created things. So that what cannot be shaken will remain. Yeah. That's good stuff. <laughs> And really, here's what God is saying. He, God is saying, he will shake everything that can be shaken in your life until all that is left is that of him. Yeah. Right? It's so much like um, a, a strong wind blows away the dead leaves from a tree. Right. God will blow away all of those unnecessary areas, those unnecessary distractions that have like nested in the branches of our lives. Yeah. And he'll blow that away. And so often what God does is he pulls us out of our comfort zone so that we can grow deeper with him yeah. and in him. And so sometimes we go through like a drought, right? Or a difficult season. And it's so that our roots will draw deeper and dig deeper into what our true source is. And so that's really what he's been showing me in this season and that unfolding of chapter 12 of Hebrews is this, don't miss the purpose in the process. That's good. Don't miss that, right. right? God has something for us, even in this season that just seems so weird and odd and, and we're ready for it to be over. God is saying, don't miss, don't miss what I have for you. And so there's this shaking and God is not shaking us to torment us. God is shaking us to awaken us. That's what he is wanting to do. And so, uh, uh, really what's well, kind of made me think about these different uh, personality tests, like the Enneagram right. test that uh, we have taken. And if you guys taken the Enneagram personality test, if you have, and you know what number you are, type that into the notes right now. Say, yeah, I'm a number six, I'm a number eight, whatever that is. If number, you haven't, go do it. <laughs> I'm a number one. This is really good. Yeah, yeah. And so what, like, what, are you, what is yours? Okay, so I'm a little bipolar. <laughs> yeah, true that. <laughs> And so I've taken it like three times and every time I tie, I'm a number eight, which is like a challenger. And I'm a number three, which is like an achiever performer. And so 
I, I think it kind of depends on what I'm doing and at what moment I really kind of default to eat. I'm probably an eight most with you. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Help me, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I fall into that three category. That is where I plan it. It is that uh, achiever, performer. It's all about being uh, ambitious. It's about improving self and the situation right. around you. And then there's this performer aspect to it, uh, but this attitude of leading by example or and you've got to do everything really well yes, yes. it's all these different types of performing yeah. now i only tell you that because it helps to shape the story that i want to talk to you guys about and really in these re recent weeks of what god has been showing me um and it's all about this it is all about where am i finding my true fulfillment and my satisfaction where am i finding my love am i finding it in god or am i finding it in other places yeah and that's where he has led me. He's led me to that place of this recognition of there are so many things, there are so many areas that because of, I think a lot of this personality that I have gone to where I am leaning on those other things to kind of do like the Gary Chapman fill up my love, love tank. tank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm looking towards those things to fulfill me in my life, to bring my self-worth and he's shown me that that is not the case. Right. As a matter of fact, recently I um, went for a walk. I love to go for a walk late at night. So I got to get some sort of exercise. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also this like, you know, it's just time for me to have this time alone with God. I call him my walk and talks. And time alone for me. Yeah. And I've just been doing that for years and years. And, uh, and there was really something special that happened actually just uh, a week or so ago. And I was going to share that with you as well today. And so I'm out on this walk and uh, even leading up to this time, really God had began to show me all of these different areas that I was looking to as my source of uh, fulfillment, to meet my needs, to let me feel satisfied in life. And so one of those was kind of this picture that I had of the perfect happy family and how that should look. And God showing me that I was using that as a source of fulfillment rather than him. My daily, week to week, leading up to prior to this quarantine and COVID season was really more of uh, all about everything that needed to happen at the church. My weeks were consumed with helping this ministry, helping that ministry. What do I need to do to help this ministry flourish? And just all of the things that I could do to bring success, it's that accomplishment feeling. It's that Enneagram three of achievement and accomplishment that I needed. And then God shows me that's another source that's not of him. There's the performer aspect of the Enneagram three. And so all of this time that I am using of being uh, on the platform at the church, being able to teach God's word to hundreds of people, to be able to pray over them for God's will in their life. And he showed me that that was another source that I was looking to for my fulfillment. Even if I didn't have anything to do on the stage, even if I was just there on a Sunday and uh, connecting though with all of the people, seeing them, greeting them, feeling loved and it was another source that God was showing me that I was looking to for satisfaction and fulfillment in my life that was not of him and so as I'm on this walk just a few nights ago I get to this point in the park and God stops me and he wants me to see the park is empty it is a beautiful cool summer evening and typically, pre this current season that we are in, typically there would be all basketball happening or field hockey, there would be kids playing on all of those toys, the tables would be full, there would be parties. This whole field area would just be loaded with people playing, running, maybe their dogs getting the ball thrown to them, frisbee, picnic, you name it, it's loaded. And here it is now, completely empty. And God, had me look at that and he showed me, I am emptying out your life. All of those things that you found fulfillment, satisfaction, you were finding your self-worth in, I'm removing those. I have removed those. 
And I want you to recognize that there is a shaking that is happening so that I can move all of those unnecessary areas so that I am the only source that you have left. And so that's my question. And I'm wondering that for you. Are there things in your life, are there areas in your life that you're finding your acceptance, your self-worth, your love, your strength, your satisfaction that are not of God? And if that's the case, he will shake it until there is nothing more there, not to cause us any pain or torment, simply to draw us closer to him. And so what we're going to do is we're going to spend some time in Psalm 63. And Kathleen and I are going to go through it because there are six challenging questions that I want to share. They really jumped off the page for me, and I believe that they will for you as well. So if you've got your Bible, open it up. Psalm 63. Let's do this together. Okay, so let's talk about those six challenging questions that we were hit with in beginning in verse one of Psalm 63. And here's what it says. It says, you God are my God. Earnestly, I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you. And so the first question that I asked myself is this, am I really earnestly seeking God? Or am I just going through the motions? Am am I just trying to check off these different boxes, right? Right, right. Like, okay, I I read today, I read my Bible, I I had some prayer time, I even fasted this month, I'm doing church online. Am I just checking things off? Or am I really seeking God with all my heart? Am I thirsting after him? David says, I thirst for you. My, My whole being longs for you. And so I was really challenged by that. Is that really describing me? Am I earnestly seeking God with all my heart and all my soul and all my mind and all my strength? Or am I just kind of going through the motions of life, meandering my way through, navigating through, rather than just really deep dive into going after God? And so then notice the second part of verse one, it says, in a dry and parched land where there is no water. And so many times that really describes our lives. Like we can be in these dry seasons. Uh, these part seasons and and we I think so many of us are feeling it right now because of the current situations uh, but sometimes I have to wonder though is it though partly because I am not seeking God and I've not been disciplining myself to spend that intimate time with him and do the things that it's going to foster a great relationship with my father, God. Yeah, that's good. And so the next question that we're really talking about, we find in verse two of the text, and it says this, I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and glory. Mm-hmm. And so and so the question that, that we can ask ourselves on that is when is the last time that mm. I saw God? So let me ask you, because it talked about sanctuary. How do you define sanctuary? Because mm. I think a lot of us, when we're defining sanctuary, we're thinking of like, like a building, right? Right? Yes. right? But if you look up the definition of the word sanctuary, it is actually a place of refuge mm. and safety. So here's the deal. That's like good. I have a patio outside. And I remember, you might remember it too, back in December, we actually had a pretty good hailstorm out here. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, I have to go out to watch it, but I'm under the covering, I'm under the patio. And so under that covering, I've got safety and protection and security and, and, uh, and all of these different things. And so it's the benefits. Those are the benefits of being in his sanctuary. And when you are there, you're close. And when you're close to him, his love is even more evident and you can't help but see the power of his glory. So I ask you to really ask yourselves, when is the last time that you saw his power? Mm. Because if it's been a while, maybe the real question is to ask yourself, when is the last time you experienced the safety and the refuge of his sanctuary? Oh man, yeah. And then the third thing actually begins in verse three, but it's really kind of woven all throughout it. Well, we'll start there in verse three. It says, because your love is better Better, uh, than life. My lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live. And in your name, I will lift up my hands. And then in verse five, it says, with singing lips, my mouth will praise you. And then in verse seven, it says, I sing in the shadow of your wings. And so the question that I really had to ask myself is here, how is my worship? 
Right. Like, what does that look like? When is the last time that I really spent intimate time with God in worship where I like blocked out all the noise and all the distractions? And maybe even I got on my knees before a holy God and I cried out to him with all my heart. Maybe I put on some of my favorite worship music. I can tell you that I have been, uh, one of my absolute favorites is Stephanie Gretzinger and listening to some of her music and her last album uh, was called Blackout and she had a, a song on there. It was just the interlude, Forever Amen. Yeah. And I think I listened to that interlude more than I listened to the entire <laughs> album. And then this year, just a couple of months ago, she came out with an, an album called Forever Amen and she did a whole song with it. And I'm telling you, the lyrics on that, it just really it resonated with me and my soul and what God was doing in me right. and uh, chasing after him in that. And so I was really challenged by reading that where David says, my lips will glorify you, uh, not just today, not just tomorrow, but for as long as I live, I will do that. That's good. I really like that. <clears throat> and so, okay, so the next one that um, I think is really challenging mm. that's in the text is verse five. And verse five says this, I will be fully satisfied as with the richest of foods. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's the deal. So you read that and you go, what does that even mean, right? Like, what does that mean? So I want you to like, think about it. Like, I have an idea. Like, <laughs> like we hunger for food, right? Like we need it mm -hmm. and when we don't have it, our bodies tell us that we don't have it. So we hunger for it, but we also anticipate it, like joyfully mm. anticipate it, right? Like when you smell a good meal cooking yes. and you anticipate that. Yes. So here's the deal. The creative team is all here at oh, my yeah. house right now, and we are obviously, we are filming for you guys, but what you don't know behind the scenes is that I'm cooking for them. I literally <laughs> am cooking for them right now. I have like the best meatball recipe like ever. If you yes. want it, just let me know and I'll give it to you, but it's so good. <laughs> and I have homemade marinara sauce that I made from scratch and I canned myself. I've got grilled chicken and Alfredo and I've got all these things. Woo! Guys, are, they're filming even more now. So here's the deal. <laughs> Are y'all hungry and do you anticipate eating these food in just a little bit? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. Cause like the house is full of it. And so, and so here's the deal. We're hungry. We're anticipating. We're mm. waiting on the things of God. Some of you are saying, stop teaching so I can go eat right now. But <laughs> what happens is when we finally fill our plate and begin to eat, what happens when we do that? There's, there is like a yum, but there's also like a, oh my gosh, I was so hungry. This is so good. I really needed this. And it is satisfaction. So the question is, am I fully satisfied mm. in God? Yeah. And does that describe how I feel right now? Does that, am I, do I sense satisfaction with God or am I trying to fill myself with other things in life? Right. Am I getting my satisfaction from my career or relationships or travel? Well, nobody, I mean, nobody's traveling right now. <laughs> no or travel. sports or hobbies or whatever. Where is my satisfaction coming from? Oh man, that's so good. Are you hungry now? <laughs> <That's weird. Yes. laughs> the next question that I was challenged with is found in verse six. And, uh, and it comes here, it says this, it says, on my bed, I remember you, I think of you through the watches of the night. So the question that I had here is this, do I meditate it's good. on God? Right, he says here, on my bed, I remember you, right? It's like, God, when I'm on my bed, I am thinking about you. I'm meditating on your precepts. I'm thinking about your law. Uh, I'm reading your word. I'm thinking about it. I'm chewing on it. I'm letting it marinate in my life. And then he says, I think of you throughout the watches of the night. So I started thinking, how many times are my thoughts or how much of my time is focused on meditating on God? So that when I get up in the morning and I do go to read my Bible, am I just reading it and be like done with it? Like, okay, I did that. I checked that off right. and I'm done. Or am I really reading it with the intent of meditating on it throughout the day, right. chewing, thinking about how does this apply? to me in my life? What kind of changes do I need sure. to make in my relationships, in my personal life, right? In my community, what do I need to do? And how is that text actually impacting my life? Right, that's good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so last question that we're gonna talk about, we find in verse seven. It's a longer one, let me read it to you. Here we go. Mm -hmm. 
because you are my help. I sing in the shadow of your wings. I cling to you. Your right hand upholds me. Those who want to kill me will be destroyed. Mm. They will go down to the depths of the earth. They will be given over to the sword and become food for the jackals. But the king will rejoice in God. All who answer, mm. all who swear, excuse me, by God will glory in him while the mouths of the liars will be silenced. Mm. And so here's the question. Do I trust God to protect me? Mm -hmm. Is my ultimate trust in me or in him? Like when people mistreat me or mm -hmm. slander me or gossip about me, do I feel like I have to take that matter into my own hands? Or, or am I going to let God be my defender? Because like, I'm going to give you guys an example, and this is the God's honest truth. Like one of the greatest criticisms that I, uh, I receive is doing exactly what I'm doing right now. And that is um, being a teaching pastor and being a girl. It... It brings up strong emotions and opinions from a lot of people who have a lot to say about it. But here's the deal. Do I feel the need to go defend myself or, or can I trust that God is going before me, that God is my defender, that mm. God will, will raise me up, that God will, will make my path clear. And as long as I'm walking in obedience to him, none of the rest matters. Mm -hmm. He's got my back. He's defending me. He's taking care of me. So here's the deal. Here's the deal. What is God trying to shake in your life? We're getting mm -hmm. to, the, to the bottom of it now. Right. What is God trying to shake in your life? Be willing to submit to his truth and his calling so that you can experience his freedom. The shaking, mm. guys, is for your benefit. It's to remove the things that you don't need to reveal the things that, that you, you do, do yep. which is him and his <laughs> unshakable kingdom. Amen. All right, so let me just pray over you right now. And so if you'll close your eyes and bow your heart to them, just allow God, the Holy Spirit, to come and to speak to you right now. What is it? Come, Holy Spirit, for every single person that is connected with us live online right now or maybe watching further down the road, that, Lord, you will begin to stir within them. Come, Holy Spirit, and just show them what it is. Show them the things that, that need to be shaken in their lives so that they can be awakened to you as their true source. Much like my story, Father, all of these different things were fulfilling me uh, and finding my source and feeling loved and accepted there that, Lord, may that happen for those. Come, Holy Spirit, for every single person that is a part of this right now and reveal to them what needs to be shaken in their life so that you become the one true source that they find freedom in their purpose and calling that you have for them. I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. So this is where it gets exciting. I'm really excited about doing this. So now it's time for us to take communion together. Mm. And so here's the deal. Um, some of you have done communion before, some of you haven't, some of you don't even know what it is and why we do it. So I'm gonna explain it for just a little bit if I can, is that okay? I'm gonna just explain it. So here's the deal. Communion is a ceremony that believers in Jesus Christ participate in because he told us to. Mm -hmm. So it's an act of obedience, but more than that, it, um, it's an act of celebration. And so what we're about to do when we eat our bread or our cracker or whatever it is that you guys got and, um, and do those different things is it's something that he told us to do so that we wouldn't forget what he did for us. Mm -hmm. So because, you know, as humans, we tend to be kind of like out of sight, out of mind. Mm -hmm. So he knew we were going to need a reminder and he didn't want us to forget. And so, um, and so we're going to take the bread. Let's, let's bring our communion over. We're going to take the bread. And here's the deal. The bread is not a whole piece. It's not a whole piece. Rather, we're gonna break it. Why? Because the bread symbolizes his broken body. Mm. The bread is symbolic yep. of his broken body. And um, it represents what happened to him during crucifixion. I mean, his body was, was broken. Scripture says that he was literally pierced and beaten and bruised and, mm -hmm. and that his flesh was shredded. That his flesh was shredded that his body would be broken so that we could be made whole. Yeah. Whole in our spirit and our mind and our soul and our body because he chose to endure the punishment of our sins. And then why do we, why do we drink the juice? Why do we do that? Because it represents the blood that was spilled for us. And scripture says that through that blood, our payment for our forgiveness was paid. It was paid off, mm -hmm. completely debt free. So we don't have to hold on to our mistakes and the things that bring us guilt or shame or any of those things. Through the blood, we are forgiven. 
they're gone. No mm-hmm. need to keep looking back or now we're looking ahead. We're looking ahead to a life that is free and that is hope filled. And some of you need that hope. Amen. You're tired of being hopeless. You're That's tired right. of feeling guilt. You're tired of feeling like you're just kind of doing it all by mm-hmm. yourself. And so I'm going to invite you today to choose to surrender your life to Jesus by declaring that you believe in who he is and what he did to bring you freedom. We call it salvation. So we're going to do our communion as we take a time of prayer and salvation. So grab your bread and your drink, and here we go. Are you ready? It's going to be beautiful. Here we go. So whether you've been a Christ follower for 20 years or this is your first moment to declare that you choose to be a Christ follower from here on out, I want you to pray this with me. You guys ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. So Jesus, right now I hold in my hand, I hold in my hand the two elements that are representative of who you are and what you did for us. And I declare before you that you are my God and that I love you and that I truly want to live the life that that you have created me for, that you have purposed me for. Thank you for forgiveness. Thank you for peace. Thank you for purpose. My my whole hope is in you right now. In your name we pray, Jesus. So, so, some of you, again, have done that many times. For some of you, it's the first time you've made that declaration. God just entered your life in a new and exciting Mm -hmm. way. It changes it forever. It brings about the eternal, and it's beautiful. So let's take the bread together. And we'll take the cup together. Oh man, what a beautiful moment. Mm -hmm. Some of you just took time to remember your Mm -hmm. Savior, and some of you just declared that He is your Savior, and that is beautiful. So look, if you said yes to Jesus for the first time, this is what I want you to do. I want you to text Jesus in LC, as in New Life Church, Jesus in LC to 94090. We want to get some information in your hands. We want to come alongside you. We want to partner with you in this time of transition. And it is, it's transitioning into the best life ever. So make sure you guys do that. Yes. Oh man, thank you so much for joining us today in our home as we're doing church online. And we just speak blessings over you as you go into this week. Blessings. Awesome.